start us off, Daryl, with a quote from one of these Gnostic sources that would give the people an idea of what they're saying. Okay, well, this is coming from my favorite title out of all this material, and I'm, uh, I love this title so much I can't say it normally. It's Hypostasis of the Archons. It's going to be a movie one day. Yeah, I mean, that's a book. That's a book, and it's, it basically means the reality of the rulers, and the rulers are these spiritual forces, these little junior gods, and so it talks about that they're really real and they really exist. Okay, here is, here is a, the beginning of the story of the creation. As incorruptibility looked down into the regions of the waters... Her image, and that's a reference to Pistis, Pistis Sophia, the, uh, the feminine divine, appeared in the waters, and the authorities of the darkness became enamored of her. But they could not lay hold of that image, which had appeared to them in the waters, because of their weakness, since beings that merely possess a soul cannot lay hold of those that possess a spirit. There's your dualism. Okay? These, these archons are soulish, okay, and they have matter, Okay, but, but Pista Sophia is pure spirit, and so she's good and they're bad and the two can't mix. Okay. For they were from below while it was from above. This is why, quote, incorruptibility looked down into the regions of the water so that by the Father's will she might bring entirety into the union with the light. You listen to that and you have to think about it. What in the world is going on? Well, salvation for Gnosis is, is the spirit part of a person being rejoined to the true spirit above. That's all that it is. It's the divine spark coming to life and rejoining this region of pure light and spirit above. The rulers, that is the archons, laid plans and said, Come, let us create a man that will be soil from the earth. So the creation here is not God creating man. It's the archons creating man. And they modeled their creature as one holy of the earth and were off and running into the creation. Okay, now what's wrong with this? Well, the main thing is, is that it's the idea that God is no longer the creator. It's that, that creation is an under part, uh, is a responsibility of these underlings. And, and so it lowers the responsibility for the creation. And they batch the job, and, they, and matter is evil, and the creation is evil. That's right, and, so, and, so, and, and the result of that is going to be that there is no responsibility to the Creator God in the creation. That, that Creator God just comes in and, and tries to fix stuff. He's, he's Mr. Fix-It, okay, and that's about all. All right, you're actually, actually talking about what the problem is. What's their answer to get out of this, this mess that they're in? In other words, the knowledge is what? Well, the knowledge is that God has placed within each one of us this divine spark. And if we are aware that this divine spark, which is about spiritual things and spiritual matter, is awakened in us, then we will be in touch, if you will, with the divine. And we recognize what really matters and what really doesn't. And then one day we'll be reunited, not body, soul, and spirit, or not in terms of our whole person, but the spirit part of us will rejoin God. And you're supposed to do that by introspection of yourself and thinking and getting more knowledge. And then what happens? Basically, uh, you, you get enlightened that the things that really matter are the spiritual things, and this physical world is, is either something that doesn't make any difference, in which case you veer off into kind of an immoral lifestyle, or this physical life is something to be avoided, in which case you veer off into a kind of a very moral but aesthetic lifestyle.